Uh, hello and welcome to video number eight in the series on taking apart a Monroe Model K mechanical calculator. Um, so when we last left, I had lost a screw on the floor. Here it is. I found it. Um, and I was going to measure it. And um, it is 836. And, it does, and this is the first thing I want to do in case I lose the, the screw again. And it's 0.382. So I'm going to put it in bag 9. So um, funny story. Um, so that's, that's actually um, made out of ferrous material. Um, and I believe it is magnetic, which means I could have just taken a magnet and dragged it across the floor. Uh, the floor here is actually like one of those um, Las Vegas casino floors. Um, it's got all sorts of colors in it uh, so that it's impossible basically to, uh, to see anything against it. They do that in Las Vegas so that, you know, like any dirt or garbage on the floor, it just sort of gets lost in all the, uh, the, the sickening detail. Um, but anyway, I was working on something and there was a really, really, really tiny screw um, that I had dropped on the carpet. Um, and I crawled around on the floor um, for you know, half an hour trying to find it, and I couldn't find it. I tried again the next day, um, and again, a half an hour of work, and I couldn't find it. Then um, I took a light, and I figured maybe raking light against the carpet would show me uh, the part. Maybe it would uh, cast a shadow. Well, that didn't work. So finally, I went to the store, and I bought um, one of those long bar magnets that you can put uh, kitchen knives up against. Um, so I bought that, I got home, I started sweeping it across the carpet, and I swear like three seconds later I heard a click and there was the screw. So uh, yeah, if you lose a screw in the carpet, um, and at, it's at least a, a ferrous magnetic screw, uh, go get a magnet. All right, so um, previously we had taken apart every single piece from uh, the right hand frame. Um, so now we are going to take off every single part from the left hand frame. Um, this, uh, this spring appears to be connected quite well. I'm pretty sure I could probably twist it off, but I'm just going to leave it for now. Um, this, uh, this axle is really annoying me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, spacer with the set screw in it. Um, hmm. Okay. Can I remove this? Is there a, like solidified junk on the end? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm going to start a new bag, bag 10, to take off all the parts that are on the left side. Um, so once I take off a reasonable amount of parts, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to, uh, well, I would like to take the assemblies apart as well. Um, but we should have a talk about um, how to clean the material, how to de-rustify it, how to anti-rust it or rust-proof it. Um, and then how to lubricate it. So um, that's going to have to be the topic of one of these videos. 77339, bag 10. So the uh, bushing with the set screw, bagged. Okay, now, um, yeah, okay, this is really sticky. Wow. Yeah, whoever did this must not have used the right oil. Vegetable oil does tend to, to degrade like that and become sticky. Okay, so there's the axle. Now if we look at the, ugh, if we look at the side here, we can see that the axle has actually um, 
been essentially riveted onto the lever. Um, I don't see any weld marks. Um, so I believe what happened is they just stuck the lever through the hole and then banged on the end of the hole to secure this in place. It's kind of what it looks like. Um, there is um, this other lever here and it appears as though it's pivoting on this part here. And that appears to be, that just looks like a press fit to me. So we can't really take this apart. So I'm just going to set it aside as, a, uh, as an assembly. Um, let's see if we can remove the rest of uh, this, this assembly over here. Um, I think I can probably just pry it out now. Yep. Yeah, so it basically um, fit right inside there. It's also quite sticky and disgusting. Um, so here we have this lever connected with a spring. I'm just going to leave that on here. And you can also see that um, it was essentially riveted in place. Um, it's kind of actually puzzling to me. Well, maybe not. I think this probably sits on a shoulder in here and then after the shoulder, there was a part that went through a hole and then it was just sort of pounded flat. Um, there are these other pins which appear to have uh, the same thing done to them. So there was this post that went through a hole and then it was pounded uh, into place, I guess. Um, same deal with all these little posts and this post. And this thing, uh, is, it, is it actually an integral piece? It doesn't really look like it was press fit. But then again, like I said, I'm not a mechanical engineer. Um, and if this were being 3D printed, uh, this entire piece, even with all the posts, would just be 3D printed all at once. Um, Actually, it would be kind of hard to because the posts point in different directions. So um, anyway, that's going to be an assembly that I'm going to set aside. OK, uh, let's see what else we've got. Um, well, there's this wire. And um, the post. I think I'm just going to leave this wire on for now. Um, OK, so there's the uh, bell muting mechanism, which I can certainly remove. It just seems to be held on by a screw, and the spring is connected to a post. So I can remove the spring from its post first. So let's lift that up. The post actually has uh, little indentations in it where the end hook on the screw fits in. So it doesn't just slide off. Come on out. What's the deal? There we 
go. Okay, so it's also um, completely put into this hole, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, and now we have this screw. There is no nut. It's just a screw that screws into a threaded hole in the frame. Okay, and it's got a shoulder on it, just like the other one did. The one that I lost in the carpet. And that's it. So the shoulder, so the lever can sit in the shoulder and just slide back and forth like that. So this is a... Uh, it's a little too loose to be a 1032, so I think it's the next size down, 836. And it is 0.382 long. So that goes in bag 10 along with the part. Okay, uh, there is this part, which appears to be just a stop with a little um, sort of slot cut out of it. Um, so it doesn't look like there is any nut, so we should just be able to unscrew it. So let's do that. So this is uh, kind of an interesting piece. Uh, let's go and focus. I hope that's focused. I think it is. So it's a screw, and it has a uh, post on the end of it, which is where a spring would attach. It's also got a washer. So again, this, is, uh, this would, would have been made using a screw machine and cutting out that post would have been part of the program of the screw machine. Um, so the washer is 0.315 outer diameter and thickness 0.033. Um, the screw is 836 and size to the end of the post, 0.559, and the order is screw, washer, part, frame. So let's put that in bag 10 and remove this part from the frame. Okay, it just comes right out. So. Uh, any other parts? Well, there's this uh, there's this spinny thing, which we'll get to in a moment. Um, okay, so there's this. Uh, this was that sort of rubberized piece, which which is an anti-shock mechanism. So let's unscrew that. Let's remove that. The reason why we're removing as many parts as we can is so that we can clean the parts and then rust proof. I'm removing the nut. Nut. And then the screw comes out of the other side. And then the shock absorber comes out as well. So it's important to note which way the shock absorber goes. It goes this way and not the other way around. Or does it even? Yeah, it matters um, because this is asymmetrical. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put these parts back together again. Just like that. And bag it. Um, there's this standoff here, which I can remove. out. There is also a washer. 
the washer is 0.375 outer diameter and 0.041 thickness. That goes with the standoff in bag 10. Um, okay, so now all we've got is this wire left, um, which I really don't want to take off um, because I'm really not sure what the whole point of the wire was. Well, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure the length of the wire from like the end of the post to its end. And it looks like it's about 1.327, or maybe one point, maybe a little bigger, you know, 1.345 or so. Um, and then I'm going to try to remove it such that there is as little destruction as possible. And I might just be able to, yeah, I can just take it right off like that. So that's pretty cool. So that goes in bag 10. Okay, so anything else that can be screwed or unscrewed actually? Nope, nothing. The only thing that's left is this spinny gear over here. Now, the thing about this gear is that if you look, uh, where's my dental pick? If you look here, there's this pin that sticks out. Let's see if I can rotate it and you'll see a pin and it goes straight through, okay? So this is typically how they attached gears to shafts with a pin. Um, and this is actually a taper pin, and a taper pin is not straight. It's actually tapered like this, so it's thicker on one side and thinner on the other. And there was a special uh, taper reamer, which was also not straight like a regular reamer, but it, uh, it was tapered to the same taper as the pin. And basically what they would do is drill an undersized hole through the gear and through the shaft. Then they would take the taper reamer and ream it out so that it was the right shape, and then they would just put the taper pin in and tap it in place. Um, and this was better than set screws because what a set screw does is it just sort of pushes against the shaft and it doesn't really provide a whole lot of force against uh, rotation of the part with respect to the shaft. Um, you can always just drill a hole straight through and then put a screw through the entire thing. That's one way of doing it, but I think the idea was that the screw didn't provide a lot of holding force against twist, um, whereas the taper pin was probably stronger. Um, taper pins are really a pain to take out because when they're sitting there for 90 years, they're kind of in place forever. Um, so I'm going to, at this point uh, in the video series, I'm going to leave it on because when we take apart some of the other assemblies, we are going to have to take apart some, some uh, gears and such that are fixed to their shaft using taper pins. And I sort of want to spend one video just talking about the removal of taper pins or how to try removing the taper pins. Um, because uh, it, can be, it can actually be easy to take the taper pin out, or it can be really difficult. And if it's really difficult, it's kind of a, a pain because you actually have to drill the thing out. And then you have to replace the taper pins. So it's a whole other thing that I want to get into. Um, so that's the frame. Uh, so the, the frames are pretty much done with the exception of that gear. Um, so the next thing that, that uh, I'll cover is I will take one of the assemblies and start taking them apart. So um, it could be the Leibniz axle, it could be the intermediate axle, um, it could be the keyboard, 
It could be the carry mechanism, one of those. I'm not really sure what it's gonna be, so um, that's why I'm going to stop the video right now. Um, it's a bit early. It's only been about 20 minutes or so, um, but that's okay. So um, it's a good time to take a rest and null your tools. So that's nulling. Uh, okay, so I guess uh, that's it for today. So until next time, see ya.